Hey everyone, welcome again. I'm Benjamin Arnaud, aka Bungie. And welcome to today's stream of Motionbox, the video browser, where we code it live uh, each, each week, most likely two times a week. Now, first of all, I would like to apologize because Reviews Tuesday, I couldn't stream because I had an important appointment. So uh, hopefully uh, we can catch up the time in that one and we can start right away. Uh, so let's do it. So let me drink a little bit of coffee first. Mm. Today's episode six, I believe. And yeah. And today is June 9, 2016. So let's start right away without um, talking too much. First of all, I would like to say that I'm very happy uh, with how the series goes so far. I'm very happy to share my development process. I know that uh, it's not perfect yet, and I know that I still have a lot to learn, and I know that sometimes it can be a little bit, you know, tedious uh, to code while uh, speaking. But, you know, I'm really happy to do that because sharing my development process is an exciting thing to do. Now, what I notice is that uh, I tend to make longer and longer videos. Uh, you know, I started, I was doing like one hour, uh, almost two hours, and at the end I was like, phew, thank God it's, it's finally over, I couldn't speak anymore. And the previous stream that I did, it was like, you know, three hours and so. So... What I decided to do and what I'm going to do very soon is uh, I'm going to do a highlight series uh, of what I'm currently doing here. So I'm currently writing the first chapter of Motionbox, pu public Motionbox development, if you will, which is called Torrent Streaming. So when you go there, when you go on the website, you can, you can actually see the page. And as you can see, the latest, you know, replay was episode 5, Torrent Controller. So... In the, in the coming days, you'll find here another topic, which will be called Motionbox Highlights uh, Torrent Streaming. And what, that, what it will contain is pretty much the highlights of every single session, long session that I did previously. So that if you don't want to watch everything, you can at least get the highlights uh, uh, demonstration that I do of Motionbox or, you know, highlights in the code that of what we're implementing. So I think it will be more watchable for people that don't have, you know, I mean, five hours to spend watching code every week. So, you know, if I go on my uh, Vimeo uh, page, for instance, here, um, you can see, let me check if the stream is working. Yeah, it seems to. Okay, so if, if I go on my Vimeo page, um, you can see that there's already a highlight there. So what is a highlight is pretty much, you know, will be built like this referring to a motion box chapter episode and then a quote you know this so program able... there which is called which is called motion box motion box is a is a program i've been coding for and so yeah you'll be able to play the highlights and see what what it was all about uh without spending two hours watching the replay so hopefully it will it will be useful for people who want to see the important bits and facts about the the previous stream so yeah that's what it is. But let's go back to our um, devlog here. As you can see, what we did previously, you know, was added libtorrent and boost to our project. So it was exciting times because now we're on the we're on the glimpse of implementing it. We created a controller torrent because we realized that we are going to need. Um, we are going to need a loop for for a libtorrent, uh, a threaded loop, so that it can work. And so that's what I'm going to implement, I think, right away today, is this loop, uh, this threaded loop, so that, you know, tor the torrent can work inside of it. And so we're going to do that now. Um, So 
to here, I need to I need a thread, right? I need to create a thread inside of the controller torrent. That's what we're going to do, you know. And uh, yeah, we're going to initialize it most likely like I did previously in this class. Uh, you know, and maybe starting it. So that when we instantiate our controller, you know, the thread is ready to go. So yeah, that's what it is. We also need to make sure that when we destroy the controller, we stop the thread. So let's make sure this happens. Be done this way. Yeah. So as you can see, what I did there was deleting, deleting the VLC engine. And the VLC engine was pretty much, uh, you know, getting the thread as a parameter. So maybe that's what we want to do for torrents. Maybe we want to, like a, a torrent engine there that takes a thread as a parameter and then, you know, is able to process the events that we require. Uh, so yeah, let's talk. Let's try to build that. Yeah. All right. Uh huh. Oh uh, yeah. So I'm fixing a bunch, a few issues there. You know, nothing too, too big, but yeah. Also, I would like to mention that if you have any question, don't hesitate to shoot them in the chat and I'll make sure to, to answer them. You know, that's the, the interesting thing about being live is that I can actually do a bunch of stuff. Uh, mainly, you know, answering coding question if you have if you have some, or making a demonstration of a specific feature of that program there called Motion Box. So yeah, hopefully that can be helpful to people, and hopefully, you know. So for declaration of this, yeah, there, of course. Probably need to declare the include uh, to. Right, the proper include there. Be working. Stuck with that. Yeah, cool. Okay, so now it builds. But will it run? You know, sometimes something builds but crashes, so we need to make sure that that it works. Hmm. Alright, something is fucked up there. Uh yeah, no, nah, I don't want you to do that. Okay. Hmm. Let me check something. Okay, yeah, sure. So, I did a new build uh, of Motionbox, a new public build, because mostly because the Vimeo uh, backend was broken, and so I fixed it. So now, if you update your Motionbox, if you have it installed on your PC, you should be able to um, to to, uh, to access Vimeo properly. Now, oh. What I need to do when I do that is mostly need to rebuild it. So let's rebuild Motionbox with that dependency. Let's see how this goes. Uh, you know, I don't like rebuilding on the stream because it can take like can take like what up to one minute. It's not a very long project to rebuild, but yeah. So there we go. Now we are on the development motion box again. We are not using our data there. Which is cool because we don't want to mess with my uh, own motion box, which is running there, and all my playlists. I don't want to remove them. And so, yeah, the thread is running. So now, what we need to do is, um, we need to, we need to um, implement the Liptoan session. So we, there are many ways to do it. Um, we could do. Like I did in Controller Media, we could do a libtorrent engine, or a torrent engine, if you will, uh, that takes um, that takes the thread as a, as a parameter, 
And so, you know, I'm not sure if I can use the same architecture there. Um, you know, we thought about the architecture a little bit in the previous stream, if you want to check it out, but uh, yeah, what I did there was pretty much, you know, having an engine. So the VLC engine is pretty much a class. And yeah, ooh, you don't remember I, I, I did that actually. Yeah, mm, abstracted it inside of a class. You know what? I'm most likely going to do that too. Uh huh. Yeah, I could call it torrent engine, but what if I'm using another thing? Okay, so to make some progress here, I need to check out something cool. Namely, the implementation we did previously. So, yeah, we're going to need a loop. That's for sure. So we're going to need a, you know, a threaded thing. And so I believe that's what I did for VLC already. Um, mm, I didn't do a four though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's a few way I can do that. There's a few ways I can do that. Uh, one of the things that I can do is just like that. Host event and uh, and say, you know what, it's a high priority event and you have to start it right away. And what that will do is that it will call an event there. And in this, instead of, uh, you know, um, just checking the events, uh, I'm going to do a loop there. And it shouldn't freeze anything since it's in the, in the, in the thread. But it should freeze the thread though, which is the, the annoying thing. Uh, yeah, it should freeze the, the, the thread. It's going to freeze the thread, no matter what. Um, so, let's look at the documentation to see how we can do that, actually. I'm not sure if I can... Maybe I can do that a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a sample there. Okay. Worker, yeah, do work. Uh, where's the do work there? Oh, yeah, connect. Okay. Operate. Yeah. Operate, operate. Okay. Not working a working thread. So, let me tell you what's in my head right now. Um, yeah, the issue I've, I have is that a torrent, a lib torrent to be precise, then it needs a loop. So, this right there needs to run in a thread. And there's going to be a bunch of alert there. And when we receive alert, we can actually decide what to do. So, we need... Uh, a full length loop. We need a loop and it would be blocking the thread. It would be running all time in the thread, so I believe. And so, yeah, we need to thread it because if we don't th thread it, obviously it's going to freeze every other thing that we would try to do on the side. So, we need to... Yeah, we need, we need to thread it. Now, we need a dedicated thread. That's even worse. <laughs> <clears throat> for VLC, for instance, I have a thread for VLC, but I could use another one. I mean, I could do something else with the same thread. Here, I'm not going to be able to do that. I'm going to have to do uh, a thread inside the torrent engine itself. Um, so, let's think about what we want to do here. What we want to do here is most likely... Um, uh, do we want to expose the torrent, the, the torrent engine? Maybe not, because what we really want to do is having a controller that can do a bunch of stuff for us. Now, um, let me see. Yeah, I'm never using that actually. So the VLC engine, 
Where is that? Yeah, it's in the controller media. Do I care about that? Oh, yeah, I care about that. Yeah, I need an engine there. Why do I need an engine? Okay, the VLC player needs an engine. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So I need an engine there. Uh, because I'm going to call it a bunch of times, I suppose. Yeah, I'm going to call it the instance of the engine. So what's that? Instance itself. What is the instance? Yeah, it's a big VLC instance. Just like the session we want to build. Yeah. So, we probably need the same thing here. Mm. Yeah, we probably need the same thing with the torrent session here instead. Now, mm, let's look at the torrent documentation again. I believe there's a manual. Uh, yeah, that's the long one, and I believe there's also a shorter one there. Oops. Uh, can I go home here? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, documentation. Nope. Yeah, the overview. Main loop. Main loop, main loop. Uh, yeah. All the state that spans multiple turns. Oh, hold on. Do the work. Yeah. Okay. Warning. Let me check something. Okay, so hold on, maybe there's a way of actually avoiding to have a blocking a blocking session here. So what if I do that? And what if Yeah, what's that? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I receive message. Uh hold on, what's A there? I actually don't like um naming my variables with a single layer because you never know yeah there's a bunch of alerts there so pop alerts okay or uh, pop alerts yeah and I, then he's sleeping actually oh man hold on wait for alerts That alert notify. Oh, we can actually get notified of the alert. Through a pointing function. So I think we can avoid the loop. Yeah. We can probably avoid the loop. That doesn't change the fact that we need probably need a thread, a dedicated thread for that. That alert notify. Oh, hold on. Can I can I get notation for that? Okay, okay. The, th the set alert notify function lets the client set function object to be invoked every time the alert queues goes from having zero alerts to one. This function is called from within libtorrent. It may be the main thread or it may be from within a user call. The intention of the function is that the client wakes up its main thread to pull, to pull for more alert during the pop alert. If the notify function fails to do so, it won't be called again. Okay, so if this doesn't 
doesn't pop the alerts most likely won't be called again until pop alert is called for some other reason. For instance, you could see nah, 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 nah. the actual retrieval. Okay, so yeah, we probably need to to use that. Wait for alert. So, wait, no, wait a second. We'll block the current thread for max wait time duration or until another alert is posted. Yeah. It's safe to call pop alerts for multiple different threads as long as the alert themselves are not accessed. Okay. Oh, hold on. Yeah, it's safe to call them. And multiple so it's very good. Cool. Okay, it's very cool. We don't need that. We only need to be notified when there's a new alert and reacting accordingly, most likely. So pretty simple. And so we, it needs a, a function pointer, right? Oh, it needs a boost function. What the... Okay. Uh, yeah. Is there um? Yeah, there's a test there. Oh, hold on. Cool. Uh, there's actually a test that does that. So yeah, run test. Let alert notify empty function. Hmm. Why? Run test. I think at time okay. Run test. Run test. Run test. Run test. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Hold on. What about that? Huh. So session zero is the one we're testing. So like is setting up, setting up a swarm here. What's that exactly? Yeah. Let alert function. Uh, what? Let alert notify. And so he's giving a function that is that he declares there. Um, oh, I didn't know you could write it this way. You have to notify the OSI to pull all the alerts. Okay. So what I, I think needs to be done is fairly simple. Um, hmm. This function is called inside libtorrent and we cannot perform work immediately in it. Why? Why, why, why? Well, and anyway, we're not, we're probably not, probably not in the proper thread. Yeah, that's the issue there. Okay, hold on a sec. So the problem there is that, yeah, you can, you can be notified. This function can actually be called from within the libtorrent thread. And so if that's the case, we need to make sure that we call the proper thread, another thread. Um, so do we need... Do we need a thread for that? Do we need a, to declare a thread for that? I don't think so. I'm not sure what did that do. Uh, hold on. Pop alert. Yeah, need to post it. Okay. So, is this defined elsewhere? Yeah, never mind. Okay. Hold on. Station handle. Series. Yeah, okay, so it's just a uh, define there. The last function. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Well. Okay. I get it. I get it. Get it, I get it. So here we've declared a thread, but do we really need it? That's the question. I mean, I could run it in a thread altogether, just like I did for VLC. Um, be sure that nothing interferes with it. And when I get 
uh, notify. Do I get notified? So, yeah, post event. Yeah. Mm. I think I should do it this way. I think what I should do is most likely thread the entire Lipton process, no matter what. I know it creates another thread and I know it's not great, but I think it's cleaner that way so that the torrent process can run in its own state uh, without, uh, you know, uh, interrupting anything. Even though we could, we could avoid, we could probably avoid using one. I think it's useful to actually use one and uh, make sure that we send the notification to the proper object so that it can you know, then replicate what we're receiving in the in the application, in the entire application. Okay, so we're going to do that right now. Uh, so if we go back there, what I need to do now is most likely create um, something like Warrant Engine, which will yeah, which would be cool because it would be like the object, torrent, a torrent session object. We could actually call it torrent session, but I don't know. I think torrent engine is better. And so what will happen is, um, so if I'm not mistaken there, I think we'll just need one, one of these, one session for the whole uh, runtime. And so this would be responsible for, do, for, for, for doing anything related to torrents. Now, this could be streaming torrents like we want to do currently, but this could also be downloading them. So yeah. Um, mm -hmm. If we go back there and we go to workspace and we go to SRC, let me check where, yeah, I did that here. Okay, I did that in VLC. So we could do, we could do that also. I don't know. I think I'm going to do that though. Yeah, the torrent engine, because I don't think I'll ever do multiple. I, I don't really see the point in doing multiple torrents engine. Maybe this will happen at one point and we'll be totally be able to do it, but Right now, you know, I'm going to do it just like VLC. I did with VLC, which was implemented this way, even though I called it VLC and not generic player. Um, or else I could, I could call it this way, but I don't really like the syntax of that. You know, it's not very convenient. Or I could call it torrent session or lip torrent. Yeah. For well, now, we'll keep it this way. So needs to be done for that. Oh, and actually, yeah, for VLC engine, I didn't do any private stuff. Okay. Well, okay, I'm just going to copy paste this, go inside torrent there, and, you know, most likely call it torrent there. Yeah. And do that. And so, yeah, I also need that. So, most of the thing I'm writing there, I try to to be really um, as efficient as possible, so that you don't wait forever uh, looking at the at me thinking on the screen. But you know, I try to be as real as possible, just like I said previously. But also, if I need to rename these later, you know, I'll probably do it. So if you check the code later, maybe don't be surprised if you notice that I renamed a bunch of stuff. That's part of the process, actually. There we go. Oh uh, yeah. So, you know, something like that. And it would be called the torrent module. How cool is that? Uh, now, yeah, probably not need to do that. Probably need to do that. And probably need to do that. Actually, you know what? Hold on a sec. Media. Uh, yeah. I don't know, what we did there. I mean, it's lower level stuff than media, so... Makes more sense. Yeah. So, now there should be torrent engine appearing. It doesn't. Why? A torrent. Oh, yeah. Because I didn't name it. 
Boom. Yeah. I need to find a better way to put my keyboard while streaming because most of the time it's not in front of my hands and so it gets tedious, you know. But yeah, there we go. So this is part of this SK Torrent module of SkyKit. And we are very happy about that. Um, let's do that. SK Torrent. Right. Right. What the f <laughs> Okay. I did that. I could. I was surprised about having two spaces between this and that, but... Maybe it was because I had a struct below it. Anyway. DLC... Nope. Torrent. Needs to be that. And that. Whoops. Yeah. All right. Don't need the instance. Event we're probably going to need the thread. Yeah, give me a thread. Warrant engine. Okay. Oh yeah. Private include. Sure. What the? F hmm. I'm not supposed to do it this way. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Something wrong here. This should not be called there. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because it's not the same one. Okay. Why not? Okay. Let's keep it this way. Here, I don't need enums. Well now, here what I'm giving it to him is this, yeah. Why do I need a destructor there? I need a destructor to notify him, okay. Hmm, hold on. Yeah, we probably need, we're probably going to need a destructor to notify the session that, hey, you're supposed to stop, man. So, I'll leave this blank because we'll need it. Or, oh, you know what? Yeah, I'll leave it this way for now. Probably need it though. So the thread is there. Here there are going to be variables, of course. We want to probably want to put there the session mostly. You know we're going to put it right now. Let's not procrastinate on that. Ah, uh, do I have the main actually? Still in the, the test. No. Oh, uh, yeah. Leap torrent session. That's the one we want. So, variables. We want a session, my dear. I'm going to do it this way. Session. Session. What's the, what's the link with file? We need, we need that. Okay. Right. Sure. Why not? Oh, the actual. Okay, no. I did right. Do I write it this way or this way? I'm not sure. Hold on. Am I writing it this way? No, I think I'm writing it this way. Yeah. So I could do it this way. I don't know about that. Never mind. Okay. So there's probably some way to shut the session when we're done. 
things to keep in mind. Main loop. Destruct session object. Yeah, huh. So it's obviously going to be destroyed when this class is destroyed. So maybe we don't need that after all. Cool. Never mind. Or we could... Yeah, or we could... Um... What did I do with VLC engine actually? Let me check. Okay, so the instance is there. So I created the instance. The instance was null. And I create the instance uh, somewhere. Where exactly? There. Right. All right. Where do I delete the instance? That's gonna be a place where I delete even stop the instance again, and I do a release there. Yeah, that's what I do, right? Mm. I can stop it. And so the even stop is most likely called in a destructor, which is okay. Um, the cool thing that I see about that is that the needed thing is that it's created in the thread. So the instance is not going to be created on the stack here on the current thread. It's going to be called in its own thread, which is what we need to do. So I'm going to do that. Uh, the init is probably going to have it null. And here, I probably need to call some kind of event like uh yeah and i probably need a private event which is event stop start stop i could do that yeah why not why not whoops something cool like that you know and so I mean, that's a pretty cool design. Why not? Do that. And so here, yeah. Same. I have a thread. I move the thread and then I stop. And it's a high priority thing. So don't fuck it up. And then the event there. So the event, we have a start where we're going to create the session. Oh, and return true if it's true. And there. Why would we do that if the instance equal null? Yeah, I'm not sure why I'm doing that. Oh, most likely because I had other events? No, I don't know. So here, if it's the event stop, we're going to delete it. And put it on null. Why do I put it on null? Yeah, most likely because... I'm gonna make sure that it's destroyed. Okay. So, what I would do there is most likely do something like that. Hold on. Where's the session there? Yeah. Okay. okay, so it's a boost. So we can actually, when we create it, we can actually pass a number of things. Concern the session about which act as a container of torrents. Yeah. It provides configuration option across torrents, such as a rate limit, this cache, order, blah, 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 blah. So here, I'll be able to give him a pack settings back uh so as you can see there's a bunch of cool thing there so in the settings path we most likely can configure it, a bunch of stuff including proxy and stuff like that which is cool and annoying because if i need to configure the proxy when using a proxy yeah hopefully there's a way to change the proxy while the session is created though uh because you know i currently have a let me show you I currently, oh, let me show you, I currently have a proxy here on MotionBox. I've implemented that early, and you could ask, why would you implement proxy so fast in, a, in an alpha program? I did it mostly because when I was testing it back in the days, I had, there was a problem of bandwidth limitation with the YouTube videos on my original provider, internet provider, which was which is free, and still the same one actually, but they fixed the issue. And so a YouTube video would be extremely slow and you know, would work very badly. And so I used public proxy. And the funny thing is about, is, is the fact that public proxies were streaming videos faster than my raw connection, you know, because there was some peering issue and some infrastructure issue on my uh, internet provider side. But, you know, so I implemented 
that very early in the process. And so it works for, it should work for every download that happens in Motionbox and also for the video player, obviously. And so every time I change that, I need to replicate the proxy in every depending components. So that's that. I'm actually going to do a very small break there to, uh, you know, just uh, stretch out a little bit and I'll be back in a few sec. And I'm back. Okay. Boom. So, um, where was I at? Okay, it was in the LibTorrent event. So here, what we need to do is, when we're starting it, yeah, we need to create the session. So what the session is going to be is a new LibTorrent session, where is it? So we need to create it, to new it, if you will, in order for it to be useful. And then we need to delete it. I think we could do it this way, actually. I'm not sure, yeah, I think it should be working. That should be okay. But yeah. Uh, and here is where we're supposed to retrieve the session. Um, do we want to share the session with the entire world? That's a good question. For now, I don't know. I don't know. You know, it's always a little bit sensible of sharing stuff like that. So, you know, we're just going to leave it that way for now. And, yeah. Do that. Okay. Mm. Let's try to build it. Okay. We have a bunch of stuff there. Mm. Let me check something. Yeah. Probably need a bunch of cute includes though. Oh. Uh, this one.
Core application has not been declared. Why, do, why am I using this actually? Oh, I'm using it there. Post event. Yeah. What happens there is that I'm pretty much, you know, create a thread and then call the thread. Since I move the, the class itself into the thread, I'm, I'm then calling it and saying, okay, uh, do something. Um, that's what I do. But yeah, so I need something like that for it to build. <laughs> okay, so this is wrong. It's missing. There's my daughter in the back, making sound. <laughs> I think she wants to participate in the stream. Okay. Let's build that. Whoa, what the... F yeah, okay. Anyway. Always forget to edit these, the export stuff. Make sure that we're using... Exporting the classes properly. Be used in other libraries uh, do I want to open it no I want to close it okay so that's that uh, yeah so now what happens is that we should stumble in controller to rent and happen and be there and then we start that yeah okay um, hmm. Let me see. VLC engine there. Uh, I mean, controller media. Probably have an engine there. Okay. Yeah, fair enough. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. engine right. you know actually I could call it engine yeah I don't know I mean it's let's call it engine anyway probably going to rename that to yeah simpler cleaner anyway uh we go there what if I go there probably an engine oh actually delete in the yeah in the destructor I need to do that then I'm deleting the thread. So first I need to, yeah, to delete the engine itself. And not, then obviously quitting and waiting for, this, for the thread to be, be deleted. The thing that I don't understand... Hold on. Whoa. Forgot to call that. Not cool. Do that. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's a fix we need. I'm not sure why. Yeah, I know what. Okay, so I'm not deleting the thread for a simple reason, which is it's parented. It has a parent, which is this controller. So when this controller is going to be destroyed in any way, which is the case in controller private, this is going to be deleted. So when I'm clearing the controller here, I'm just clearing the instance, and then the thread goes goes down too. So yeah, should be working. Uh, but here though. Let's do a bunch of stuff. First, yeah, we'll do that later. Let's do that. The engine is going to be a new torrent engine, obviously. And so, I'm going to pass in the thread as a parameter. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what I need now is to add the include most likely because it's, it's not going to be happy with that thing include. It's not the type. 
Good. So I'm putting the include in order of low levelness, if you will. So Qt is the base I'm working currently using. So I'm using most of Qt objects and uh, you know container and stuff like that. And then on top of it, I build SkyKit, which is a kit. It's not really a framework. It's not really a. It's a kit API if you want to build desktop app. And maybe later it will be able to do other stuff. But the idea of SkyKit is just to be uh, um, a kit that is ready right away. Uh, that is a, a kit ready to build an application, a desktop application right away with the philosophy that I'm using. That's a very important thing to understand. Uh, you could say that Qt is, is a framework for you to build an, an application is the, is the same thing. But let me express it, it very clearly. Qt tries to be a generic framework and that's pretty great because you can do lots of stuff with it. Uh, the price for being generic though is that when you want to do something specific, when you want to do something designed the way you like it to be designed, uh, you need to change a bunch of stuff inside of Qt. At least that's what happened for me. So you need to, you know, you need to make sure that the um, the objects are properly rendered. For instance, if you want to add a, a given behavior, a specific behavior for images in your QML view, you need to re-implement them and so on and so on. The idea that I had with SkyKit was, okay, instead of embedding everything inside Motionbox and, you know, just use it once for one application, let's adopt a, a framework philosophy, a kit philosophy, so that you could, like, for instance, use that kit and create a window like that very fast and right away. And so, sure, it will be specific and sure, it will embrace my philosophy for building application, which is a philosophy among others. And I don't pretend that I have the best philosophy ever. But at the very least, if you want to build an application a la Motionbox, you know, you should be able to do so uh, very fast with that kind of technology. And so eventually, if I'm building other stuff or other application, I won't start again uh, from nothing, from scratch. I will start from SkyKit, which is actually the core of Motionbox, and I can build ev everything else. Now, another cool thing, which uh, which also should be mentioned, is that if I don't really like, if if, if I want to build another front e front guided user interface, if you will, uh, a side motion box, another one, I could do one. I could do a very simple one. I could do uh, a terminal one. I could, I could do uh, a mobile one and so on. Everything based on SkyKit. So yeah, it enables me to start right away with the philosophy that I'm using for desktop app and it, and it gains huge time, loads of time. That's one of the side of it. Another side of it is adding cool functionality that you don't have right away inside Qt, for instance, a media player like VLC. It's very cool to have a SkyKit library like that, that enables you to create a window and to put a VLC player in it right away. It's very powerful and I'm, I'm actually do using it for uh, everything that I do in that stream. For instance, here that application is built with, with SkyKit and is actually embedding a VLC player. And now what we're doing with Torrent is also something interesting to have. So yeah. That's the reason why I'm doing it. Hopefully this makes sense and you, know, you don't get too confused about my English there, but that's the idea. That's the idea, man. So yeah, we need the SK include there, which is this one. So let's do a bunch of stuff actually. Torrent engine. Oh, he's not happy because the torrent engine doesn't exist. Of course it doesn't. We need to populate the file. Um, hmm. Yeah, never mind. I'm going to uh, populate them. Um, let me call generate here. Hold on. Let me just up the microphone a little bit. Okay. Go. Oh, you can close it, man. So that way you should be able to see it. Yeah, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Whoops. 
Yeah, I don't know, man. Um, yeah. So, um, hold on. Oh, that's weird. Okay, never mind. So, yeah, torrent engine there, torrent engine there, torrent, torrent, and there, a bunch of things inside the torrent. Yeah, okay, never mind. We're going to... Ooh. Is this only going to show me the difference? No, it's for the global trunk, obviously. So, here what I'm going to do is go there. Uh, not there, actually, there. And then I'm going to add... Uh, torrent engine. Torrent engine star, and then in private... Should add the same thing. Oh, no. obviously didn't. There's no private that. And boom. But yeah, like I said now, um, Point engine is there. So this should be cool. This should be cool. This should work well. Uh, so if I go there, uh, as you can see, we created the torrent engine. So let's commit that. Let's get torrent. Create. Whoops. Create torrent engine. Woohoo! Boom. Yeah. So, there you have it. Now we have an engine. The soundtrack of this game is really amazing, Planescape Torment. That was one of the one of the RPG back in the Bioware era. And this game was really cool actually, because it had a very, very roleplay side of it. It was exploring the roleplay side of you know RPG back in the days very deeply. And so the adventure was very deep, there was a lot of dialogue and stuff like that, and not so much combat actually, and the combat could get messy. I never finished it though, uh, which is weird, you know, it's, for some reason the Infinity Engine games back in the days, the Bioware Infinity Engine games that I played back in the days, I never quite finished them, whether they're Baldur's Gate or Planescape Torment. Uh, uh, on the other side, the Black Isle Fallout a series, uh, I love them, and I finished them. I think that the reason to explain that is that you had a, a higher degree of freedom in the in Fallout games. The great thing about Fallout is the fact that you were really free in what you were doing, in, and you were so free that in the first Fallout you could finish it literally in a few hours if you knew what you were doing. So, I think that I sensed back then, even if I couldn't really put words on it, that the sense of freedom that you had in Fallout was superior than what you could get in Black Isol in uh, Bioware titles. That being said, um, Black uh, Bioware titles were had a very a, a great ambiance and a, and a great uh, we're proposing a great universe to you know wander in this is the legend of Carandia, so it's a very old game i never finished this one either it's a very hard adventure game and some uh you know some puzzles are so hard man i mean but um the music is great it's a westwood game you know the guys that did the uh, command and conquer and dune series and uh, I love that studio. I mean, it was a great studio before they, they became industrial and bought by EA and stuff like that and bad things happened. But that the days, back in the days, I mean, great studio. Uh, so yeah, uh, did I? So yeah, we just commit the torrent engine, which is cool. Can we build it? Yes, we can. We can. So, uh, no, I cannot go there. Oh, hold on. Yeah, okay, that's the syntax I'm using. I'm using the same here, okay. I was just checking the syntax to be coherent. Uh, okay, what's next? 
Mm. What's next is actually checking that we are creating the engine, I would say. Um, so, yeah. What's next is actually saying, hey. And there, creating session. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah. Oh, wow. All right. This is great. So I just, you didn't see that because it was on the other screen. <laughs> and that's one of the problem when you're using two screens. But Motionbox pretty much prompt me for a network uh, authorization. That means a bunch of stuff. First, we can see in the log there that we've created the session. So we went through there and create our libtorrent session. What happens when we did that is most likely inside of the torrent library, you know, we created a bunch of stuff and initialized network stuff and that worked. So that means that now we're ready to process comments and to call him and to say, you know what, get this one, get this one or get that one. And so, you know, now we can build our implementation and start calling the libtorrent functions, which is cool. I'm happy about it. <laughs> so yeah, let's remove the QDebug and let's uh, proceed, shall we? Uh, is it still running? No, it's not. So let's get back there. Um, I'm a little bit worried about the fact that it says warning, but I don't see them. Why don't I? Why don't I see them? Oh, there. There's a glitch with warning. So yeah, where is that? In the boost. Oh. All right. I believe we're going to need something else now. So, what will happen is that uh, when something wants to use torrent, it'll probably go through controller torrent and ask for something, or. Yeah, maybe go through the engine. I'm not sure yet. Oh, we'll do it. But now we need to do something else. We need to do something else, which is... Build something that I've thought about. And before doing it, I need to explain a few things. So, in the previous episode, I think it was episode 4. Yeah, I put it there. We had a brainstorm on the Torrent backend implementation and we thought about different ways of doing it and wh what I ended up doing it was doing doing was a backend torrent player. What a backend torrent player was pretty much a backend for torrents that um yeah. Well, it was an entirely specific backend torrent player and we were supposed to giving a play another backend which would be VLC and to to, to call the VLC backend from the backend torrent player. Now, it's not a very elegant design. Uh, one of the reasons why it's not elegant is because uh, when you're setting the source here in this backend, and, uh, oops, yeah, when you're setting the source here, um, you're going to call, let me actually ex try to, to be more visual about that. Uh, yeah, there. Um, you're going to call a bunch of stuff. So you're going to check whether it's a point torrent file or not, whether you should call your libtorrent or not. Now, that's cool and all, but the problem is um, in my backend torrent player there, I'm going to have to do an if um, every time. Well, no, actually that's not the main problem. The main problem is that there are two scenarios that I want to handle, really. And I don't want I don't want for a given scenario to be to require implementation that would um, wait on the other implementation. Let me explain that very simply. Uh, I want to be able to play traditional video file with my backend. So 
To do that, I obviously already have a backend VLC. And I obviously need to lower that sound here a little bit. So, you know, I have a backend VLC there and, you know, it, it does its job really well. It's very efficient. There is no friction. There's not much if inside of it. I mean, it, it does the job and it's, it works well. I iterated a bunch on it, so it's cool. Now, in most cases, this is going to be great because in most cases, we don't play torrent. Torrent is an if case. It's a, it's a, a particular case. So what we want to do is instead of building an implementation that would be a special case inside a generic one, what we want to do is make sure that we check once for the special case. And if that's the special case, we go to the special object to handle that. And in every other situation, we're just using the generic one and we get all the performance and no friction for testing anything. And the best way to do that, I thought, so I thought, was to use create a backend and specify another backend inside of it. But then you go through the friction of, of you know, having a backend that encapsulates another one instead of just switching backends. And switching backends is more elegant. So I think. So what are we going to do about it? Well, we're going to build something new. We're going to build something new. We're going to build a new capability inside of SkyKit. Uh, in the declarative player, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm doing this live. I'm not very sure exactly the form it's going to take. I've thought about it, so, but I'm, I'm not sure yet. So here you can see that we're setting a backend. We're currently setting a backend there. So yeah. With a bunch of stuff and and so on, and so when we set the backend, um, yeah, we also set the the timer and stuff like that. Everything here. So when I go in the app into abstract backend, uh, which is what we set here, let me check. Uh, yeah, loading the source and so on. So yeah, there's a public interface there. Mm. Yeah, and then there is things we're supposed to re-implement. That's that. Now, the issue about that... Um, let me think about it for a sec. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so here, as you can see, okay, sorry about that, sorry about this interruption, uh, so let's go there, so here, as we can see, I'm setting the quality. Um, and so the quality is um, calling this function, which is uh, a, a virtual one. Uh, and so, yeah, as you can see in backend VLC, I'm re implementing that. Now, there's a bunch of things to be said there. Uh, so, first off, hold on a sec. Um, sorry about that, I'm back again. So, um, yeah, uh, here's, here I'm calling the backend set quality. And in the backend set quality, what I do is a bunch of stuff to set the quality and everything. So, uh, if I'm uh, if I'm re-implementing uh, a backend, a torrent backend on top of the player backend, what I'll need to be, what I need to do here is, are we in a situation where we're actually accessing a torrent? If yes, then go there. If not, then go there. Which is a little bit tedious. What I would love to do instead is just switch seamlessly between one backend and the other. And I'm not sure how to do that best. So one of the of the things that I could do is, you know, just re-implement uh, an abstract backend, which is uh, 
which is just which would be a backend torrent, and inside of it specified uh, the backend player, just like I did. And so what happens there is uh, you end up with a backend player. Whoops, with a player torrent, torrent player, like that. And that's not great because then you have to um, check every time you do play, replay, and everything, even if you're currently not playing, even if you're not playing a torrent. And that's something I don't like. What I would much prefer is having a loop, uh, is having a hook, sorry, so that when I do something like setting the source here, um, there. Here, what would be great is when I'm loading the source, I have a check. And depending on the check I do, uh, I either choose to go for the backend torrent root or for the backend VLC, one of each. And so in the backend torrent, you know, I can be mess as messy as I want. Uh, I can do a very specific implementation for torrents and make sure that it works great. And I don't have to worry about, is it classical playback or is it torrent playback? I can just focus 100% on making something great for torrents. On the other hand, in the VLC player, I can make sure that it works great for native video files, if you will. So I think that's what I do. What I want to do is fairly simple. I'm going to do a hook. And so, whoops, it will look like that. Something like that. I think I'm going to call it backend hook for the sake of clarity. And what will happen is that a hook will be a backend except it has an if case, which is use me only if we are in this if we are in this situation. If we are in this situation, hey, I'm there, you can use me, and you know I'm going to I'm going to be great at what I do. But if we're not in, this, in, the, in that situation, don't use me. And so a hook is most likely going to be kind of the man in the middle between a traditional abstract backend that it will need to encapsulate inside the, of the hook. And, um, you know, it's going to be the man in the middle between the player and between the player. And so the backend hook will be a great, a great thing for us because like I said, I'm not going to do the network peer flick, the, the network implementation for streaming torrents, which is what uh, PeerFlix is doing, for instance, or other streaming system. What they're pretty much doing is they're setting up a server, a local server, and they're streaming through the, th through the, th the server toward VLC. I don't want to do that. What I want to do is um, do it locally. Just download the file locally. And since I know the state of download, and since I know the state where the file is at, I can just, you know, through my code, say, okay, now this should be playable. Try to play it. Try to play it locally. Try to play it right away on the hard drive. Don't stream it or whatever, you know, play it. And so I think it should be a better implementation. It should be. Maybe it's not. Maybe there's some friction that I didn't think about, namely that when you need to access the file on the hard drive, maybe it will be slower than when I think. We have to, we'll have to test. Maybe it will be better to actually do it through a server. I'll, I'll be able to do it that way too, if I want. Uh, we'll see. We'll try implementations. But what I want it to be is to be, I want it to be low level. So instead of talking too much about that, I'm going to implement it. So what I could do, I could either do a list of hooks so I could, so that the user can register number of hooks in the declarative player. That's one of the things I could do. Or I can do like uh, what I did here, a property where you're giving hooks and uh, a hook and he's happy about it. I think I'm going to go for the property route with just a single hook. I think I'll do that. I don't know, actually. Mm. But it doesn't matter because... Yeah, I think what we should do now is... Hold on. Yeah, don't need that. Okay. What we should do now is this. 
uh, this is not going to be an SK torrent. This is not going to be an SK torrent. This is going to be an SK GUI. Is it an SK GUI? Yeah. Okay, so what we need to do is probably this. So I'm, I'm writing created because in the log it's going to be created, but we haven't created it yet. And it um, should be like this. Yeah, it should be abstract hook. So you could say that it's not a very specific term and that it could be a bunch of stuff. My philosophy for naming stuff or naming functions, uh, objects in SkyKit is to be as simple as possible. So currently I'm not using hooking of any kind in the library in general. If I happen to do so, then maybe I'll rename it later. But right now I don't need to. And so I'd much rather, even if it's less explicit, I'd rather have something short because the minute you've learned what it is, then it's going to be shorter for the entire time you're using the object, you're using the, the class. So I like to have short functions, even though they are less explicit, instead of having extremely explicit stuff that are longer. Here the abstract hook is acceptable, especially since it will most likely be inside of there, and it, I would assume that it's there. It will be in the, yeah, in the media folder anyway. So let's do it. Um, so to do that, I need to look at something important, which is, yeah, okay. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I see what I need to do. Let me think about it. Oh, uh, yeah. Hold on. Hmm. Yeah, I should call it abstract because it's abstract. Yeah, yeah, Okay, so we need to create that first. We need to create the hook, uh, which will be, like I said, the man in the middle between traditional backends and, you know, other ones. Um, so to do that, we need to go in media. Yeah. And here we should have an abstract backend somewhere. What is that? Yeah, there it is. Oh, for some reason it's there. Yeah. So something like that. Maybe I should reorganize that indeed. Yeah, put back in net first for some reason. Mm. Okay, never mind. There's gotta be a reason. So I, I try to organize files here as best as I can so that it makes sense, but sometimes thing gets weird. Now we should have abstract hook. Okay. So, this is cool. What we need to do here is, mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, let me think about that. Yeah, there's a bunch of things we need to do. Um, a backend hook should not should not be complex to implement, and it should and it should be done only on things that you really need to do. For instance, on lib uh, on uh, on the hook torrent that I'm going to do, I only need to hook it when I'm setting the source and when I'm seeking. The rest of the time, you know, just do your thing, man. 
So, yeah, hopefully this can be an elegant design. Um, you know what? Let's do that. So, I'll make a quick break. I'll, I'll do a quick break here. And when I come back, we'll implement the, the hook. And so, we'll make sure that then... Hold on. That torn player there is no longer based on abstract backend, but on abstract hook. So that it can, uh, you know, be the man in the middle between the player and the playing backend. I'll be back. And I'm back. Let's get some cool stuff. Let's do some cool stuff. 
Oh, uh, well. Alright. So now, we're on the GUI side of things. Here. And here too. So, you know, I'm, I'm currently implementing a hook, which is what I need to do if I want to ever stream torrent file in an efficient way. Uh, now, this is the best implementation I could think of at the moment. Maybe it will change. And if it does, no big deal, because I'll take everything that I learned with this, every code that I can reuse, and just move it to the new design. You know, try to be... I try to be as open as I can to the best possible design. And at the end, most likely we'll have something cool. So that others can... You know, so that we can build up on it. Uh, let me... Yeah. Need to do that too. So what is a hook? Well, a hook is... A very simple class object that is going to check whether you know it needs to do stuff before coding the before calling the actual player. So it's very convenient. Let's see how this works. So first of all, I need to remove a bunch of stuff. Uh, so for instance, huh, hold on. So yeah, let me check. Start back in here. I don't think that set proxy or clear proxy is. Standard stuff, is it? No, it's not. Oh, hold on. Yeah, it's not. So what I need to do is I need, obviously, to re-implement that. And to make sure that we call the proper one. So, I'm going to explain to you how, how it will work uh, in a sec. But first, let's clean a little bit all of that. Uh, network cache, I don't need that. Do I need events? I don't think I do. Remove that. Do I need unloading and unfrag updated? I don't. So I don't need that. Hold on. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Okay. Mm, okay. So yeah. This is not the best file to start from because it there's a bunch of stuff that I'm not going to need here. Oh yeah, private. Private, private. Where is your private man? We just removed it. Hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. What the? F what the f? <laughs> uh. Yeah. Did it this way. Why? I have no idea. Oh. Never mind. So it should be this way. Uh, yeah, I never know about that. Put off one there. Why do I need that? No, it shouldn't be this way. Okay. Hmm. Does it ever exist? Yeah, fair enough. But yeah, it should be back in. No, it should be abstract. Move that, move that, move that. Need to do that. We'll need that. Hmm. Going to need a need. Whoops. Cool. And I don't have private functions. So. Hear that? So yeah, I know it's a little bit redundant <laughs> with what I did previously, but I like to do it this way because then I can... Reminds me the way I built it previously and so I can... Oops. Yeah. Keep it that way, man. I can iterate on it then. So interface set proxy... No, we don't care about that. This we care about. This we care about. Uh, and I'll explain in a second why. But for now, just do that.
Whoa. Yeah. Wait, wait. I can stop volume. Delete. Why false? Why false, man? Which I'm true. There's gotta be a special case there. Why do I return false on that? Huh. If I can delete a girl true, it means it's already re deleted. Deleting true. Oh, it's a delete later. Yeah, it's a delete later. I remember why I did that. I did that because otherwise it crashed, so... <laughs> You know, I guess it's useful, you know. And I think the it was a VLC on the VLC side of things. I need to make sure that everything works well though. With the with the hook. With the middleman there. So film mode size, dual frame, cool 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 and all. Yeah, backend dual frame is obviously where the good stuff happen in OpenGL the player uh yeah update frame sure update it man return uh. yeah return an image what would we care okay so events we don't need those those so let's remove them and we don't need properties there you have it pretty cool uh, let's go in abstract hook underscore p h there. Uh, there we go. Uh, hmm. Yeah, port declaration. Nope. Don't need that. We don't need that. Whoops. I can VLC private. We need that. We need that. We don't need that. We don't have any function, don't have slots either. Let uh, plug and lock, we don't care about that. Uh, there's gonna be variable in a second. Yeah, okay. Hmm. Variables are there. And the VLC event, event setup. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't need that. I don't need that. Okay. Okay. Let's rename that though. And we're going to rename it abstract hook. There's an abstract class that we need to implement. Don't we? Boom. There you have it. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Hold on. Uh, I'm not sure about that though. Oops. Sorry about that. Uh, let me check that. What do I do there, for instance? Include. Yeah, I don't need that. Hmm. Oh. I click SK include. Yeah. What the f hmm. Oh, 
Oh. That's weird. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I'm coherent with my syntax at the moment. Yeah, politesque includes there. Wow. Okay, I need to review that later. <laughs> yeah. I need to review that later. Okay. I'm going to stick with that syntax now. Um. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I need to do that here actually because I need to separate these. But when I don't, yeah, calling that private include though is weird. Hmm. Okay, let's adopt that behavior. By default, I put SK there, except when I need to differentiate between private and public. Okay, works good for me. Sounds good to me. Uh, so now uh, we need to do a bunch of stuff. First, we need to, whoops, generate, and we need to go to, um, yeah, SK GUI, obviously, and here we need to add the abstract hook that we just built, don't we, like that, and so our C GUI, um, yeah, in media, We need to add that too. Oops. So obviously this is all very abstract, so it's not going to work if I don't test it. Um, okay, so. Huh. So we're on GUI there. We need to... Specify that. Do we add there too? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, cool. Now we have a bunch of warning. Uh, whoops. There. Okay. Um, hmm. So now we need to do a bunch of stuff. First of all, an abstract hook like this one needs to have a backend. So Yeah. Hmm. Now, there's a bunch of way to do that. Um, yeah, it's going to be mandatory. So if you don't set one, you know, we should be in trouble. Mm. Let me let me see about that. Yeah, what we should do is the following. So here is not the back end actually; it's the player. Well, yeah, never mind. Can do that. So, here we're in the, in the abstract, we need this. We need this. Do we need explicit there? Yeah. I don't think we need if it's like that. Yeah, hold on. I'm not sure if I need to, to, to put an explicit. I don't think I did. Oh, yeah, I need. It needs to be explicit. We call this one. Are you sure about that? Yeah, I think I don't need that. Um, hmm. We need to grab it. No, we don't. We need to change it. No, we don't. We don't want to change it. We want to keep it for the whole... Process. Yeah, okay.
Yeah, I just need to exist. Just exist. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. There's one in there. Okay, so now... Here's the thing. By default, in an abstract hook... Um, okay, so by default, we're going to call this... Same goes for everything. So by default, it's going to call our default backend there. You know, by default, everything is great. We just play it this way. So it's going to be a actually a very convenient way to test because we can probably test it, um, you know, as a traditional player and see if it still plays. And if it still plays, then we can build up on it uh, some cool our cool torrent implementation so that it in streams them at one point. There. Whoop. I'm going to set the volume. Yeah. Do I need to return that? I don't need actually when it's void, I don't need to do return. It doesn't make sense. Um yeah. You know. So it's pretty, it's pretty clean. As, as you can see, there's no condition there. It just calls it. By default, it's a clean implementation. You don't need to... You know, worry about anything. It's just... Forwards the calls. Um, yeah. Set speed there too. Speed. Backends, it's say. Uh, I'm not doing that though. Should be. You know, I'm just doing to fix it right away. Otherwise, I never fix things. So. No, I'm going to do this. It's not good. You know. Put this one. In your option. Yeah. Alright. Ah, uh, update the frame. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Can I read it this way? Good. Not sure about that though. Yeah. And that. Yeah. Right. So yeah, the problem here is this. Obviously, it's going to be protected by default. So... We're going to need to do something. Oh uh, yeah, okay. 
here I'm going to declare it friends. Friends, sorry, with uh, with it. So abstract hook should be my friend. I trust him. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, he should be my friend. He's a good guy. So for those of you who don't know, friend means that you know uh, the a given class can access your protected and private functions, uh, which breaks the encapsulation of the, the logical C++ encapsulation. So you should use it with great care, the friend keyword there. Uh, but I like to use it to keep things simple. Unused viable Q was that. Where is that? It's there. Yeah, you're right. You're right, my friend. Okay, let's do that. But this should work. Now, let me see something. Yeah, in Bacon VS it's properly laid out. Oh, that's the mistake on my side now. Let me check one more thing. Alright, so let's recap. We got the backend source implemented there. Play, replay, pause, stop, set volume, delete. Okay, we got them covered. Then, seek to, yeah, set speed, set repeat, set quality, set field mode, set size, draw frame, update frame, get frame. As you can see, every single pure virtual and virtual function we're implementing uh, in this hook. That means that <clears throat> by default it will just call the backend, the the parent backend, if you will, and that's cool. Now here's the good here's the good thing about that design. Here you could do something like that. If I don't know URL equals torrent, you know, if that's the case. Um, preload the file, something like that. Else, you know, just set the source right away. And so what we'll do there is just, you know, we'll just preload. Let libtorrent do its thing. And when it's done, uh, we'll just call the backend set source. So, for the 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 contain the encapsulated backend, it will be transparent. You will never know <laughs> that something happens on the on the upper on the upper level, which was you know very complex stuff in order to make sure that the file is ready to be played. You'll never know about that. You just know, all right, I need to do that. I need to play that file, and it should be, you know, it should be there, and just play it. And I don't care about what might happen on top of it. So that's an elegant implementation. If and only if you call that implementation only when you need it. If you go through the if and the hoops and the everything of the of the of the hook, only when you need the hook, and you can know that very simply by knowing what kind of source it is. If it's a torrent source, you're going to a hook, to a given hook, etc. So we're probably going to add a function like check source or something like that on the abstract hook that is going to be pure virtual. So that the hook can define, okay, I'm going to check the URL, and if that's that, then you know what? Go there. So that's that. We're going to commit that. And uh, we need to be in a situation real quick to, to test it. So there's one more thing that I'll probably be doing after that, and then I'll end the stream, I think. But let's commit that first, you know. Um... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, let me check that actually. Yeah, what is that? There's a bunch of stuff that we changed. Yeah. There's another thing that I needed to do. I'm going to do it right away. Um, did I add it though? The abstract? I'm not sure if I added it. Sometimes I forget. I think I did though. <laughs> Sorry about that if I did. I think I did. Let me check. It's a media. Is it abstract. Yeah, I did. Okay, never mind. 
So we need commit that. So that's that. Now we get a abstract hook. How cool is that? Very cool. Now I need to do something else in VLC. Um, in VLC engine actually. No, controller. Uh, controller media. There. So there I have. I'm calling it VLC engine. Why is that? Don't call it this way. Create engine. Oh wait. I'm giving away the DLC engine so that people can use it. Hmm. Well, am I sure about that? So in any way, if I was to use other engines beside VLC, there will be just one of them used at the at, at a given time. So, hmm. yeah, I think it makes more sense to actually call it just VLC, uh, just engine. I think it makes more sense. I'll just do it, you know. Let's make it clean. So, yeah, obviously refactoring is not the greatest thing to see on stream, but one of the things that I do when I'm code is that I refactor um, every time I feel like it. So if I feel like I need to refactor, I do it right away. Because if I try to do it later, most of the time I can forget. So I never do it. That being said, I try not to refactor for the sake of it. Uh, it's not really refactoring here, it's just renaming. But uh, yeah, so now we need to say that in SK Media. No. Is it controller media? Yeah, only controller media. So just do that. Controller media. Fix syntax. We'll probably do something like that. Um. Did I ever did that though? Syntax. Yeah. I don't think that's worth specifying. I think fixed fix, fix syntax is uh, is good enough actually. So yeah, it's fixed. Now, there's one more thing that we need to do. And uh, yeah, then we can start proper implementation. So let's close everything. Whoops, everything. And let's go to a little thing called backend to one player. So this is not going to be backend to one player anymore. This is going to be called differently. So we need to rename it. It's going to be called hook to end. Is cleaner, so I'm happy about that. Uh, so before we do that, though, put everything there, um, and let's go.
Uh, yeah. So. Uh, media. Very happy with that implementation. I think it's going to be cool. Uh, yeah. Oh. Um. Dot H. Book. Warren. Dot H. Book. Okay, so yeah, you know, I, I know I'm spending a little bit of time renaming stuff, but um, the way you name stuff is important. I could explain it a little bit why, but you know, while I'm renaming stuff, while you're renaming stuff, sure, it's redundant thing to be done, but while you do it, you think about what you're doing. You reflect on the change you're doing. If Every time you want to do something differently, you apply it right away. You don't think about it while you're doing it. And so, what I, I like to do things progressively. And I like to rename th things by hand because what I'm doing so, I can visualize every step of the renaming process. And so visualize how it feels as a whole. And so, yeah, some of you might think this guy's taking hours and hours renaming stuff. And... That's true, I'm taking a long time doing so, but it's important for the sake of design, for the sake of, am I doing things right? Does it feel right or not? So, um, does it feel right? Yeah. So here I need to, yeah, obviously change this to hook torrent. You know, getting a sense if that makes sense, if it feels intuitively right. I'm a very intuitive person, so I follow my instincts. And so when something feels right, yeah, just feel safer by implementing it. Feel like I'm doing the right choice. So yeah, it's important to do that. Uh here I need to rename back in Torrent to uh No, I don't need that. I need to rename back in Torrent player to Back in torrent to hook torrent. There you have it. And find find Yeah. Mm. Oops. Okay. So here it shouldn't be that though. Yes, I put this function there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, here's the here's the cool thing about it. I can now call that. So now it's a hook. Then I can remove all of that. You know, and decide later what I'm going to implement. So I don't need that anymore. Cool. Simple as that. Here, I need to make sure, though, that a bunch of things we need. First of all, here. Is it really anything that? And here. This. You know, make sure that it's calling the proper base class. Like that. I can turn player. Why do I need that? Yeah, I know that. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I didn't rename that. Rename that immediately. Isn't fine. Cool. Uh, all right. Oh, I need to remove that though. I need to remove that. Good. Yeah. And here. I need to do that. Just copy. Let's end this call. We need. Okay. This should be working though. Are you kidding me? Oh. 
Why is there that? Okay, because I forgot. Okay. Never mind. Forgot to remove a bunch of includes there. <laughs> I guess that reminds me. Use a incomplete abstract class. You bet it's incomplete. Yeah, cool. Alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Are you not happy? Yeah, because book torrent is going to be there. Why do you think that? Hmm. E. Yeah. Hmm. A little bit tired here, so yeah, it's back in VLC there. The new this this yeah. Why are you not happy, man? Uh the cap be cooked on. Yeah. You you do I need to... No, I don't. Back to private. Okay. No matching function to call abstract code. Oh. Yeah. forget things sometimes so yeah there needs to be this what's that hook otherwise I cannot provide the private pointer we need so yeah Something like that really ah good let me think about it. Yeah, uh, we need. Mm, so yeah, we need it to be abstract to private, and we need a backend. We need a backend. So let me check though. Uh, maybe this. Yeah. Parameter goes second, it seems. Yeah, you need the backend there. Okay. Yeah, because backend is mandatory. You need to have one. If you don't have one, very bad. It needs to be based on one. So we need to find a proper way to actually do it with QML because I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it. There's a bunch of ways I could actually do it, though. We'll see. We'll finish that for today, though. So here, yeah, should be able to do that first. No, and uh, do that. Yeah. Does it fit? Oh, yeah, my good friend. Like this and so probably need to fix my hook torrent there and uh, yeah it should require a backend oh so we roll man you know it's uh, well, yes. this 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 and voila 
do it. Cool. It builds. It builds. So we're good to go with that. Um, but does it run? That's the question, my friend. Whoopsie. So, yeah, very happy about that. Um, you know what? I'm going to commit that, the, the thing we just did. And then I'll just do a recap of where we're currently at to be a little bit more visual about what I'm doing. Because I know that when you're staring at a code screen for like two hours, it can, be, it can get really abstract. So here we just fixed the syntax for controller media. Yeah, we did. Now we did that. Um, or SK Torrent, we rename. Uh, we rename um, the backend one player to this. That's what we did, didn't we? Let me check the syntax. And then I'll do a quick recap about, yeah, what I did. Cool. We renamed it and we also changed its base class, but... Um, you could actually say changed, would be, would make... It's not just a rename, it's a change. Or updated. Yeah. I'll commit it this way. I review anyway, I'm reviewing my commits. So if it doesn't feel right, if it doesn't feel right, sorry, I'll modify it. All right, so as you can see, sometimes I'm committing a few things in a single commit, even if they're not directly related. So I'm doing that, which is acceptable to me because it's, you know, it's acceptable that to put related stuff, even if it's not, if it's not strictly what I'm committing. Maybe at one point I'll do differently, but I want to, to find the sweet spot between, you know, uh, being efficient and being clear. Uh, so, someone is saying hi. Hey, humble doomer. <laughs> Don't hesitate if you have any question, by the way. Uh, let me check if there's any viewer currently. Yeah, humble doomer. Okay, so... Um, I'm going to commit that, you know, the change between backend torrent player and hook torrent. And boom. Okay, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to answer the questions uh, that I get. There's one currently. And then I'm going to do a review of where I'm currently at in developing motion box with developing motion box. So Humble Doomer asks, what languages do you know? And I believe that by languages, it doesn't mean it means programming language or scripting language. So I know a bunch of them, but I'm mostly versed in C and C++. Uh, and I'm using also the, uh, the QML scripting, um, uh, you know, the cute QML scripting stuff. And it's based on ECMA, so it's pretty much JavaScript. Uh, you know, that's what I know. But, you know, I've, I've been using lots of them. Uh, I've been using, like, for the website that I did for Motionbox, been using Ruby, I've been using, uh, you know, um, I'm also using shell scripting uh, for generating a bunch of stuff. So, you know, I think that at one point when you understand how a language works, uh, then, you know, you can learn a language really fast. I'm learning Python, that's pretty much it. Yeah, Python is a, I think it's a good scripting language. Now, 
I think if you really want get to get serious about uh, programming lower level stuff, which is closer to the hardware, it wouldn't hurt to learn C or C++. I know it's hard, but if you really get to it, into it, and you really understand pointer and stuff like that, then I really believe you can much you can learn pretty much anything. <laughs> That's the cool thing about it. I learned C right away, and so by learning C, then I pretty much understand potentially understands any language really fast and I can speculate or at least you know get a glimpse of what it's doing underneath which is important and so you want to make a game an RPG what should I learn well it depends what you want to do if if your goal is to if you if what you're trying to achieve is building a, an RPG vertical slice prototype as fast as possible uh, you know maybe you should try something like Unity, or maybe you should try something that is, you know, even even RPG Maker, I don't know. If you, want to, if you want to have something playable really fast, you can try that. But if you want to get serious, and if you really want to do your thing, and if you really want to infuse into what you're doing specific stuff, and if you really, if you also want to learn programming, because creating games is a great way, creating games prototype is a great way of learning. I did a bunch of them. I did a Bomberman game. I did a Gia Zelda game. A Zelda game, sorry. You can check them on my website, by the way. Bungie.me uh, So, let me learn. Uh, what should I learn? C, Basic, or just C, maybe Objective-C. I don't want to use anything but my own work. Okay, cool. Well, I think you could do it with, with C. I think I would, I would try to do it with C or C++, but Basic C++, you know, like just class basic objects and just a gaming loop but I think I would you know learn how the C how the C pointer work first so that I'm really you know I I know how memory works and I know how to allocate and disallocate stuff and once you understood that really I mean making a game is not that hard objective C I've used that when I was coming on iOS back then you know, uh, Objective-C can actually encapsulate C code. And I don't know about you, I don't know if you looked at Objective-C, but the syntax, man, I mean, the syntax is very, very weird. <laughs> There's like some weird calls, and it can get pretty long syntaxly, syntaxically. I don't know if it has evolved, but I'm not a big fan of Objective-C. I really love C, C++, and... I'm using, what I'm using here is the Qt library. You could actually use that to make a game. The Qt library is very easy to learn and it's abstracting a bunch of lower level stuff of C++ that can get very tedious and hard to learn. So you could actually make a simple game with just Qt, you know, like, uh, let me let me get a little bit graphical here. If you go on Qt, the Qt website, for instance, um, you know, you can just get it. Uh, so make sure you get the open source version, though. I think I have it pointed out in my in my page. Let me check it out. Uh, yeah, you should get that version. Hold on. Yeah, that's just the tree view, but you get there. View all downloads, you know. And there, uh, there are the installers. So there's the online installer. So it's pretty much cute for open source project you can start by learning it and there's a very complete documentation if you look at the cute documentation for cute quick you could do it with cute quick for instance you can look at that um, you know getting started there's a bunch of examples that you can run and then you can iterate and learn from it because i found out that the best way to learn to code yeah i think the best way to learn to code but the best way first of all is to learn it your way Nobody is going to teach you code, you have to practice it. So the best way to learn is actually doing it, practicing. Just do it. Do it, uh, you know, it's going to be... You're going to make mistakes, obviously, but that's the way you learn. So mistakes are not mistakes, they are the, the pathway to learning stuff. You know, so if I was doing a very simple game right now, I think I would try to learn Qt, uh, C++ with Qt. And then just do a simple, you know, uh, layer, like a simple 2D character moving on the, on the map. Pretty much w like what Handmade Hero is all about, for instance. 
Um, I don't know if you know this this guy. So this guy here is coding a game from the ground up, from the very thing, the very first line to the very last pixel, and he's doing it with low level technology. So he's not using library. I would advise not to do that at first. I'm trying to make it text based, not sprite based. Oh, wow, interesting. Yeah. Okay, so then, yeah, I think I would, yeah. Okay, make it, I'm not sure about how graphical it would get. If it's only text, then you can maybe do it in the console. But maybe you want to get a little bit, a, a little more graphical with pictures and stuff. And then again, for that, the cute library would be great because you're just displaying a, you're just loading a cute picture and then, you know, just showing your images and then most likely having interaction with the mouse or the keyboard. I think it would be very easy to do, especially since you don't need performance. And also the cool thing about Qt is that you'll be able to deploy Windows, Linux, OS X and maybe handled devices. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, I think this series here is very instructive when you want to learn the lower level of stuff. But I think that uh, sometimes it can be discouraging to get too much into the specific. And sometimes it's interesting to focus on the thing you want to learn, learn it and have a, um, a concrete result so that you feel motivated about learning what's underneath it. You are speaking Greek to me, I'm a nerd, but I don't know what all this is. <laughs> you know, you can still... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's okay, you know, uh, starting uh, starting coding is very... It's, it's not hard. Actually, coding is not something hard. Now, there's a lot of things to be learned, but coding itself is pretty simple. You need to persevere, you need to, you know, just get out there and practice. You know, the best advice I would give is, first of all, there's no advice. Do your thing, you know. The second advice would be, practice it. Uh, go there, code it, and, you know, learn from it. And uh, if something gets uh, horrible and doesn't work, learn from that. If something is great, learn from it, you know. So, <laughs> see, learn the code the hard way, okay. Let me check that. Learn C the hardware. Oh yeah. <laughs> Actually, when I was back at school, I did a school that is called Epitech. And this school is extremely based on practical learning. And we learned C in one month. That means that I went from complete noob to uh, knowing C. Uh, pretty well actually including advanced stuff like double linked list or stuff like that in one month so i think if you really get to it and if you're really um dedicated to it if you really dedicate yourself to it you can learn c in one month and from that point your coding life will never be the same if you learn coding through javascript and through abstraction and through front end you're not really learning to code you're learning an abstraction that is doing some stuff for you, but you don't really know what's what it's all about. Learning C is a way to understand that with every single instruction you give, no matter where it is, if it's on a website or anywhere, it's always going to end up in a computer, in a in a in a CPU being processed by a CPU, and doing something hardware-wise. So, if you learn a low-level language like C, you understand that. And if you understand that, it will stay with you for the rest of your life. And you'll probably be able to work with anything after that. So learning C first, I think, is the greatest way to learn programming. But that's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But my opinion is that learn C as fast as you can. Do your text-based stuff in C. Uh, show it to your friends. Get feedback. And they're most likely going to say that it's pretty raw, but you don't care. Learn C. And once you've learned it, iterate from that and get more graphical and do stuff and maybe do a scripting scripting extension with javascript but you know start from c because it's rock solid you know so that's what i would advise <laughs> you can learn it in one month if you if you learn it be dedicated about it you know i mean just go for it you know uh, that's the way i did it I, I i went i was very dedicated in learning it and so 
you know, if you're really dedicated, you're not going to forget everything you learned the, the previous week. You're just going to dedicate yourself until you learn it. And once you've learned it, uh, by the way, you're learning it by by trying it. So if you're not coding while you're learning, if you're if you're not coding every day, you're not learning. Don't fool yourself about that. Re uh, reading a book uh, about C or C++ is not learning. If you want to learn, uh, you have to code. Learning is coding. Coding is learning. You are not learning if you're not coding. So you have to code every day. And at the end of the day, you should, you know, set a new milestone. Today, I'm going to learn that. Today, I'm going to learn, I don't know, how to create my first main and how to create my first loop. Second day, I'm going to learn how to how to allocate a tab and put integers in it and so on. You know, you just have to do it, man. You just have to code. So, yeah, that's what I would say. So, before wrapping this up, I'm going to recap briefly what I did so far with Motionbox and then, you know, I'll say goodbye to you for today and the next stream will be on Tuesday. So let's do that. And maybe if there are a few short questions at the end, I will answer them. So let's do it. Um, actually, let's keep the music. And so let me clean the application there. All right. All right. So this is Motionbox as it is today. Uh, Motionbox is a video browser, like I said. That means that it can pretty much explore um, the internet, you know, as a collection of playlists containing videos. So for instance, here I type, I type Star Wars and it's going to parse the Star Wars website to extract playlists from it. You know, maybe there's a bunch of stuff that might be extracted. Here, for instance, it just extracted uh, a local a native video file, which is this one, Star Wars Collectible and so on. I can try to play it, by the way, and maybe it will play, let's see. Yeah, as you can see, now I'm playing a native video file on the Star Wars website. Now, I can browse a bunch of results here, for instance, the, the YouTube results there, and then I can explore them, and, you know, really just, when I found something interesting, uh, if I find something interesting, I can just play it and while I'm playing it um, I can open a new tab and this is the minute you open a new tab you enter into a, into a whole new world like I was explaining previously because now you're no longer let's expand that actually now you're no longer just watching a video you're watching a video while browsing while exploring uh, related ones if you want and so you're doing two things at the same time but what's really great about it is that if you find something interesting at one point, uh, you can just click on it and boom, you're playing it. And so now all of a sudden you're playing another video. And so you could eventually check what's related there. For instance, I could open a new tab here and check related stuff. And when I find something interesting, again, I can play it. And so that's very cool because let me actually grab a little bit of water here live while we're streaming that. If I do the macro view here, the wall, the wall view as I call it, you can see that there's a bunch of video currently being displayed there. And so what's cool about that is that now I have an overview of everything and I can go back to the previous video I was playing. I can do that from the wall view, but I can also do that from the tab there. As you can see, those tabs, these tabs here are reminiscent of the browser experience you might have when you're using Google, for instance, Google Chrome or Firefox, Chromium. And so if I click there, I get back to the moment I was in the video. So it's really cool. Uh, and you know, you can access a bunch of stuff there. And so if I want to listen to some music, for instance, I could do that and then find a video I like, for instance, you know, and once I've found it, I can double click on it and I can start playing it. And now I'm playing a video. Let's try to make it a little more uh, graphical though. Do I have something graphical? Yeah, that should be graphical. So here now I'm playing a new video. And so what's really great about that is that it behaves like a browser. That means that instead of talking the HTML language of the page, it talks the video language. So if I do previews there, I'm going to go back to the previous video I was, and previous, and to the very first video I was. So now, not only can I, can I browse video horizontally, which are the tabs you see there, 
but I can also browse them vertically in a, in a, in, a, in a given tab. You know, so I can go back to one or the other. And so not only can I do that, but I can also explore channels, you know. I don't know if I like the artist Eric Pritz, for instance, I can see if this guy has a channel, I can see he has, you know, and just play something. Uh, boom. Now I'm playing something else. And so what's really great is that not only does it let you browse your content, like I showed horizontally through tabs, you can open multiple ones, by the way. Uh, <laughs> let's try to populate them a little bit with the uh, original stuff there. So yeah, as you can see there, I have a bunch of tabs open. I can also search for something else, for instance, Madion. I like this artist. Uh, I, I like to type Madion because, you know, there's a bunch of results for him. But like also, I don't know, tap best, for instance. And there, there we go. So now I have a bunch of videos playing. And so what's really cool is that not only do you get um, an horizontal view like that, you can also do previews and backward and forward like I showed previously, you can search anything. But you can also explore different backends. For instance, here I could go on Dailymotion and see and explore a bunch of stuff on Dailymotion. You know, I can also check Vimeo and explore a bunch of stuff on Vimeo. And go back to YouTube and explore a bunch of channels there. I don't know. Uh, you know, explore a bunch of, the, uh, of stuff there. So it's really cool. And it works currently for three backends, but at one point, I want to be able to support any backend. What that means is that you'll be able to write your own with very few scripting language. It will be like, kind of like the, the, the HTML, an HTML page, except it will be a video ML, if you will. And you'll be able to write your own with just a few instructions. And so hope hopefully we can add a, lots of new backends in the coming future. Now, to reconnect, to rebranch with what I'm currently doing, I'm currently doing, uh, I'm currently doing torrent support for Motionbox. So, what that means is that let me actually find a, a very relaxed sound here. Okay, so what I'm currently doing is the is the following. Um, let me show you. Here, uh, if I go to download, as you can see, I have a few torrent files there. So I'm currently supporting, looking forward to support torrent streaming. So if, it's, if I drag and drop this, for instance, here is going to open locally the torrent. So here is the torrent. And when Motionbox extracts uh, the torrent, when Motionbox, when you, when you drag and drop a torrent inside Motionbox, he doesn't see a torrent, he sees a playlist. And so what Motionbox really did there is he saw the torrent as a playlist and extracted the file inside of it which is this file. There's another one here, and there, the other one, the other file. So if, for instance, I go into the video network there and I tap Big Bug Bunny Torrent, for instance, uh, you can see that we're going to end up there. So there, there's a bunch of stuff. First of all, there are most likely, you know, Vimeo videos that you can find, another YouTube one. But if I click there to dig inside the download page, if you will, here you'll see that there's also torrents. So now I'm doing this through the network. I'm not doing this locally on my machine, if you want. So here I can access the torrent right away, extract it, parse it, and boom, there it is. And so I'm going to use libtorrent, like I said, like, like I showed previously, to download that file. But the cool thing about it is that since I'm going to do sequential download and since I'm implementing a VLC player, I'm going to be able to stream the file before finishing the download for any torrent file, any torrent video file, as long as the peering is good enough, which is the case for a lot of torrent files these days, really. And so here, as you can see, there's another one which is empty, but never mind, there's one there. So that's really cool because that opens a whole new perspective for Motionbox. Not only can Motionbox play, you know, YouTube, Dailymotion, and Vimeo and native files like I showed, it can also open local files and folder but in the coming future, it will be able to stream torrent. And so, imagine here, you will maybe have a YouTube video, maybe a YouTube file, maybe a local file, for instance, maybe a torrent, you know, and you can move from one to the other seamlessly, you know. And when you click from one tab to the other, you're going back to, this, to the precise moment you were at. 
So if you go there, you go back to the precise moment you arrive at. If you go there, you're going to start the video and so on. So you have this whole experience that's persistent, by the way, because if you close the application and run it again, you get to the point you were at. So it's fairly cool, you know. And so, for instance, if I drag and drop a local file, let me do that now. Um, let me find something cool. If I drag a local file, um, hold on, back up, motion box, video. Yeah, here I'm going to drag a local file. There you go. And so now we're playing something local, which is the motion box trailer. You can see I'm playing it local, but I can also go to test here, capture, videos. And here, I probably have a bunch of other, of other content. And so that's really great. You know, now I'm playing local stuff. And so the cool stuff, the cool thing about that is that I can create playlists from that. By clicking there, I can create a new playlist, which is Pretty convenient and I can click add track and boom now you can see the track is inside my playlist I can add a bunch of them if I like like this now I can go back to my Star Wars video there and maybe I want to add this one too let's add it and boom maybe this one is cool too let's add it and boom maybe I want to add so let's go back to big bug bunny here torrent Whoops. Maybe I want to add the Big Bug Bunny Torrent. Who knows? Maybe I want that. So here, what I'm adding is an AVI file inside of a torrent file. And so I'm adding it there. And then Motionbox will be able to stream it right away. So that I can create a playlist with a bunch of different sources. You know, if I go back to Browse here and I type Star Wars, for instance. Uh, in the second page, if I remember well, we had this native video file on the Star Wars website. So. Here, for instance, you know, this is not a YouTube video. What I did there is pretty simple. I've extracted the HTML page and extracted the, the, the file there. And I've extracted the cover of the web page. The cover of the web page is this image there. And so I'm displaying it. So I'm, if you want, I'm building a track from the information I get on the web page. When I see a web page, I don't see a web page. I see a playlist. When I see a torrent, I don't see a torrent, I see a playlist. When I see a local folder on your hard drive, I don't see a local folder, I see a playlist. And so that's the way Motionbox works. Motionbox is a whole new tool for the next decade, uh, for the new era, really, of the, of, the, of the modern internet. It's not a vertical player like you're used to using since VCR, really, and the television model, if you want the vertical model. Motionbox is a horizontal player, built for the internet age, built to let you browse, access and browse videos and to go from one to the other seamlessly, you know. That's what Motionbox is all about and hopefully we can make it work really great and support a bunch of stuff. And hopefully it's a tool, not hopefully, actually that's a state, that's a statement. Motionbox is a tool that is going to serve your best interest because it's a free software tool, so the entire source code is accessible, you can check it online and you can modify it, you can hack it, you can learn from it. And so Motionbox, as opposed to a video player you might find in an HTML file, for instance, in an HTML page, Motionbox is working with your best interest in mind at every time. Motionbox is a player you control. If I change the position in the video there, Motionbox is going to access the video file right away. It's not going to send information to Google about what I'm doing, about the, you know, statistics and so on. No, it's just going to change the seeking point in the video and that's it. You know, that's the way it should work public videos should be accessed directly. And that's what Motionbox is all about. Here, if I'm trying to resume Big Bug Bunny, it's going to connect to Vimeo. Sometimes Vimeo can be slow, and so, you know, sometimes it's slow, that's the way it works. That's just the way it works. Actually, you know what? Let's not wait for it to start. Let's try to another one. So here, it has cached, if you want, the video file, the video link, sorry, and it's going to access it right away. So Motionbox is really a tool that works for you at every time. And so, you know, you can move from one backend to the other. Here, without you even noticing, you know, I went from one backend to the other. And if I click people here, for instance, then all of a sudden I'm parsing channels. So, hold on, let me uh, show you that in full screen so it can be more visual. Here you can see we're parsing Vimeo. And so, for instance, if I find something interesting, 
can play it. And there we go. It's playing. Playing very slow actually today. Uh, seems to be to be. Uh, there seems to be quite of a problem with the Vimeo backend. I'm not sure about that. But anyway, you get the idea. You get the idea. <laughs> So yeah, that pretty much wraps it up. So in the coming days, I hope to be able to make Torrent works. And then I think one of the key things to be done will be to add some new um, some new backend there to make it more complete. So now I'm going to answer the remaining question, if there are some. And after that, I'll just complete the, the streaming. There we have it. Um, yeah, okay, so let me close that. So, any question in the chat? I code every day for the past 10 days and night, haven't slept yet. Okay, so another advice I would give you there is don't do that. <laughs> Get some sleep, man, because uh, at what moment, well, even though I advise you for getting some sleep, I know that you know you, you'll work at night and, because I did it too. So, even if you give advice, people will just do it. Now, the thing is, when you code late at night, uh, in most cases, you're confused, you're getting confused. Even me, when I'm coding late in the morning, early in the morning, like I did today, I get confused. So, when you're getting confused, just go to bed and let your brain relax and maybe figure it out it's himself uh, during the night. And also keep in mind that it's hard to be completely focused for a long period of time, so... Anyway, I'll see you next Tuesday. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for everything. Stay awesome and take good care of yourself.